This is a cool one, Will. You ever wonder why it is that an animal like a salamander can lose an arm or an organ and then just regrow it? Can they? You didn't know that? No. That's right. Oh. There's some species that they're just like, oh, my arm got, I lost my arm. I'll just grow it. I'll grow another one. Huh. It's incredible stuff. Very cool. And what scientists are trying to do now is figure out what allows those species to do that and stops us from doing the same. So you have some animals, mammals, like ourselves. We get an injury, lose a limb, whatever. We have scar tissue, scarring that occurs. And of course, that scarring is going to shut down any opportunity for anything to regrow in that location. Yeah, we can't do what the salamanders Those do. salamanders, they don't scar. They just get to work regrowing the lost limb. A team of scientists led by James Goodwin, PhD, of the MDI Biological Laboratory in Maine has come a step closer to unraveling the mystery with the discovery of differences in molecular signaling that promote regeneration in the axolotl, that's the type of salamander they're looking at, a highly regenerative salamander while blocking it in the adult mouse, which is a mammal with limited regenerative ability. So they're playing with mice as the mammalian substitute in order to determine these differences and see if they can amp up the molecular signaling in the mammal to behave in a similar fashion. Uh, instead of regenerating lost or injured body parts, mammals typically form a scar on the site of the injury. The scar creates a physical barrier to regeneration. Our research shows that humans have untapped potential for regeneration. If we can solve the problem of scar formation, we may be able to unlock our latent regenerative potential. Axolotls don't scar which is what allows regeneration to take place. But once a scar is formed, it's game over in terms of regeneration. If we could prevent scarring in humans, we could enhance quality of life for so many people. Wow. So they feel that through, well, maybe eventually through some sort of external uh, intervention that they could stimulate a similar scenario to what the salamander experiences. And you could... Regen and by the way, for this salamander, it's not just limbs. I'm talking about organs, like imagine mm -hmm. people who have issues with, I don't know, kidneys or heart or it's crazy. Uh -huh. Now I was reading this other part in here about human infants. Human infants can regenerate heart tissue, and children can regenerate fingertips. I didn't even know that. Really. It's likely that adult mammals retain the genetic code for regeneration, raising the prospect that pharmaceutical therapies could be developed to encourage humans to regenerate tissue and organs lost the disease or injury. Human infants can regenerate heart tissue. I didn't know that. And children can regenerate fingertips. I didn't know that. So we lost the, like we, like you and I lost the regenerative uh, feature speak in for our your, body. Speak for yourself, Will. <laughs> Uh, well, you got hair, so you're regenerating hair. So mm. there's that. Um, but this is a weird, uh, weird analogy with scar tissue. It's like the fact that you, like, we need to cancel scar tissue in order to regenerate. Yeah, and scar tissue probably, like, it obviously serves a purpose. Yes. So, therefore, you're going to have to be monitored and you're going to need some other type of therapy in order to compensate for the fact that your body isn't scarring and they're trying to stop the scar from happening while simultaneously trying to encourage this other behavior similar to the salamander. So, yeah. I mean, this is fringe stuff, but I found it to be quite interesting. Yeah, what if it doesn't stop? What if you grow, like, more arms? I don't think that's in the genetic code, though. That's the thing. You're supposed to have it's latent. two, like, in your DNA. It's latent in your code, Yeah, my dude. Yeah.